Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. As you know, we've been going over the work of Dr. Lee McIntyre for the last couple of weeks and the characteristics or tropes of the science deniers. Now, the other day I was out on Nathan Oakley's Discord channel and I got into a conversation with somebody with the charming name of Flat Bastard who challenged me to disprove something called the 45 degree sector test. Now, I asked him to describe to me exactly what the 45 degree sector test was, and he basically cut and paste something from this website, Flat Earth Intel. I asked him to describe it in his own words, and his attitude was, well, if I had to describe Shakespeare in my own words, would it be as good as the original Shakespeare? Well, my response to that, of course, was, well, if you can't describe it to me, you don't understand it. I need you to put it into your own words so that I know that you actually understand what the test is because I'll have some questions about it. Now, after much going back and forth, he did finally say that it had to do with a test of the spherical versus the flat earth developed by this gentleman, Mr. Corey Kell of Flat Earth Intel. I asked this gentleman for some details as to exactly what findings he would expect from this test that would help him determine whether the Earth was flat or a globe. He allowed that he probably should watch the video before he answered that question. Now, this is a classic example of somebody offering a citation for something that they never bothered looking at. But I decided to be a good sport and have a look. Um, I don't know if that was a very good idea, and I don't think that it was his best move asking me to look at it. But I came to two conclusions. One is that Flat Bastard really shouldn't have asked me to look at it. And two, that's an hour and a half or two hours of my life I will never get back. So I'm going to channel my friend Blue Marble Science a little bit and say you need to put those oven mitts on and move that monitor back to protect it because we're going to have a look at Flat Earth Intel and the 45 degree sector test. Cue up the music and let's go. Now first what I'm going to do is just let Mr. Kell introduce himself and give his background and then we'll have a chat about the different characteristics of science denial that he exhibits. So let me get out of here and we'll get going. As Karen said, uh, my name is Corey Kell. I'm the creator of Flat Earth Intel. And basically, this, is, this briefing to you is going to be a knowledge and information share. Something, uh, I've talked to some people here already, and uh, one of the gentlemen said, I've seen everything from flat, on Flat Earth. And I'm like, yeah, you ain't seen this yet. So, um, again, thanks so much to the community, and it's great to see everybody here this morning. Where it all... <coughs> A little bit about my background information. Who's Corey Kell? In other words, who's this individual that's standing in front of me trying to tell me that the Earth is flat? Okay, now a lot of you have already come to that conclusion. Do we have anybody uh, outside the continental United States, Oconus? Everybody within the continental United States? Okay. Um, a little bit about my biographic information. As Karen said, I was in the military. I was in the United States Army Field Artillery for 23 years. I retired in 2006. And I did all, uh, all, facets, all facets and all job functions within the uh, artillery. Tactical trainer advisor. I'm a, a certified master gunner. Uh, I've also done the survey and celestial survey operations. Uh, after my retirement in 2006, I went right into defense contracting, which a lot of military does. A lot of the military folks, just because the jobs are there and you have the technical training and expertise. I've been in defense contracting for 15 years and came back from Afghanistan this last year. Uh, but I've done all sorts of uh, jobs within that field, communications, combat trainer, team leader, te technical trainer. 
Okay, so where are we so far? First of all, as many of you may know, I was in the military and I recognize the jargon. He's putting an awful lot of jargon in here, uh, you know, specifically the way he describes this class as a knowledge and information share. That's kind of a military briefing buzzword. But we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm not saying that he's making things up as he goes. That'll come later. But what we have so far is we've got some gentleman that claims to have been in the artillery for 23 years. He should have good experience with all of this. He's put out a lot of credential material to try and give himself a little bit of cred to this audience. Now, let's watch the next part. Where it all started for me, how I got into Flat Earth. And really, I'm not a Bible beater by any means of the standard. I was raised a Christian uh, by my parents. But my, uh, my interest in giants led me to Flat Earth. As I looked on the internet, uh, kept, uh, I was doing research on the internet. It kept uh, telling me, hey, check out Flat Earth. It kept recommending in uh, r right around 2016, 15. When I first heard this subject, I thought, I laughed at it and I said, wow, Flat Earth people really think the Earth is flat? That's crazy. <laughs> so as I continued to do my research, I found a different story and I finally looked at it. And what I ran into, uh, I, I did the research, I went into and looked at Mark Sargent's Flat Earth's Clues. And that started me on my journey. So then that raised questions within myself. And I thought, there's something, you know, that I know within the military field of military science using the sun and geometry that I can uh, provide solid evidence that the Earth is flat. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a look at this from the five tropes of science denial. First of all, obviously he's looking into giants on the Internet. And he's doing his own research. So I don't think that he's going to the anthropology department of a university, maybe enrolling in an online class to audit, or taking advantage to the free military education system. It sounds like he's looking at YouTube videos. Because these YouTube videos are recommending he look at Flat Earth, because he may have some interest in that too. Then we get the classic story that, oh, I didn't want to believe it first, but then I was overwhelmed with the evidence. Okay, how many times have we heard that with conspiracy theorists and science deniers? And then what convinced him to do this? What began him on his hero's journey here? He met his mentor, Mark Sargent. I don't know about any of you, but Mark Sargent was one of the first people I looked at when I was starting to debunk the flat earth. And I found his flat earth clues to be juvenile at best. I mean, this is something that a middle school science student could easily overcome. Apparently, this gentleman who's been in the military for 23 years in a technical field was convinced by it. Now, you see how he's starting to play to his audience. He's trying to put out this idea that he had special knowledge from his military training that he could use to prove that the earth was flat. So let's have a listen and see what he has. That I can uh, provide solid evidence that the earth is flat. So I started to do my research and uh, there's a lot of great content on the internet. Uh, you should be very proud of yourself. Those creators who are putting out that excellent content on the internet. Give yourself a hand. So once again, he's pandering to the audience to try and get them to look at him favorably. Now, he's not a Bible beater, but he started off his presentation with a Bible quote. And now he's starting to also toss out some terms that sound very impressive, but are they used correctly? For example, he's talking about his experience in military science. Military science is not science, technology, engineering, and math. When you look at the artillery in the Army, we deal with things like trigonometry and physics and astronomy. These are sciences. They're called by their actual name. Military science is the philosophy and history of the application of coercive force. Now, when I was in ROTC, that was the Department of Military Science. The head of that department was called the Professor of Military Science. We studied Sun Tzu. We we studied Clausewitz. We studied Mao Zedong. 
We studied small unit tactics. We studied the structure of the military. That's what military science is. It has nothing to do with astronomy, physics, gunnery, or trigonometry. So this should set off an alarm bell to you. He's using terms incorrectly, terms that he should be very familiar with if his background is what he says it is. So let's continue. So with that, using the sun, and the reason I say we use the sun, and this is my message to you, it's the real answer. The sun is the gold standard. The military uses it. They use it for celestial survey operations. It is definitive and it is absolute. We can also use it, we can also use military science and geometry to determine the sun's actual distance. And a lot of this information is out there, but you have to kind of, you have to really search. It's in a lot of different little corners on the internet and in books. But we can use the sun by measuring direct sun angle, get down our timing to determine what we're really living on, what the surface shape of the Earth is, and the sun's actual distance between three or 4,000 miles, whether it's a physical or projected object. Right now, it seems to be a projected object. And one thing I want you to remember, and that is the sun is always 90 degrees to a person, place, or thing every second of every minute of every day of every year within the prime meridian zone. Once you fully understand that, that is the end of heliocentrism. Okay, so again, we're starting to go off the rails. He's making a lot of claims based on unknown knowledge that he has. Now, do you see how he's trying to manipulate the audience? He's putting a lot of words out there that sound very technical. Military science, geometry, having to search the corners of the internet to find this information. But he found this because he's special. He's a researcher. He's an independent thinker, just like those people in the audience that are making YouTube videos. Now we see that he's making a series of claims. The sun is a projection yet it has a distance, three to 4,000 miles, okay? What's it being projected on? If it's projection, why does it have a distance? Now, the fact that the sun is at 90 degrees to some point in the prime meridian zone, whatever that is, the sun's always between the tropics, of course, it's not called the prime meridian zone. But yes, indeed, the sun is 90 degrees to a point on the earth at all times. That's called the geographic position of the sun. That's how we determine our latitude when we use a sextant and get a noon sight of the sun. These geographic positions where the sun is at the vertex of that point on the earth are published in nautical almanacs, and that's why we use the nautical almanacs. But let's go ahead and continue. Once you fully understand that, that is the end of heliocentrism. What I'm talking about is the high sun. In other words, there are times in the, of the day that the sun is too high in the sky for you to observe it from a curved surface, okay? You just have to know when and what sun seasons. So this is what I put together on the website and I encourage you, if you have questions about this after, the, uh, after my uh, presentation, please feel free to come up and talk to me. I'm a very open person. And that is, some of the considerations, we, we need to understand timing. Timing is critical. In other words, what time of day is the sun too high in the sky? And what we're going to talk, what I'm going to talk about is putting in a sun survey point, something that eludes the heliocentrists. They don't like it because it's timing. Once you put in a sun survey point, that sun comes right back to that survey point the following day. You cannot escape it. What we also need to understand, the observer location. In other words, where we're observing the sun. And the real difference is beyond 45 degrees. At 45 degrees and below, during certain times of the day, it's indistinguishable. In other words, both the heliocentric and geocentric model would work. But once that sun gets above 46 degrees, she's flat. It is only flat. 
We just need to identify that. And by times, I'm talking about between the hours of 9 and 10 a.m. in the morning and 3 and 4 p.m. in the afternoon. The, summer, the sun seasons, I'm talking about late spring, the summer sun, and early fall. High altitude, higher altitude gives you lower sun angle. Sea level will give you the highest sun angle. Sea level is the closest to the geometric perfect form of the Earth's shape. Well, we're going to go ahead and pause here. Because in our next episode, what I want to do is I want to go over his 45 degree sector test in some detail. And that's going to take a little time. Now, the take home message from this is you see that he's using some very technical terms and presenting himself as an expert in this field based on his military service. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. He's putting out a lot of buzzwords from military briefings, for example. The other thing is he's misusing terms like military science, which sets off some alarm bells with me. I also found it rather interesting that he claims not to be a Bible beater, but started his presentation off with a quote from scripture. So in our next episode, we're going to have a look at his 45 degree sector test. We're going to compare his thoughts on what's going on versus reality. And we're going to use some actual measurements to check his results and see what the conclusions would be. So until then, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you again for stopping by. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. And I want to take a moment and thank the Patreons, the channel members, the subscribers to this channel and my other channels, and the people that have supported my efforts to do good science and bring it to everybody. So until then, take care, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.